Hello, everyone. So we are happy to welcome you today for our seminar presenting the latest sustainable innovations. So my name is Beatrice Hugues. I'm part of the Premier Vision fashion team. And uh, just as a reminder, you'll be able to see this seminar on our website after the show. So in this one presentation, we won't be able to delve into all the challenges that the fashion industry has to face in order to meet today's environmental issues. But Premier Vision wanted to give you some keys uh, to pro provide you some uh, examples, concrete examples of initiatives, innovations to help you advance your sustainable sourcing. So the fashion ecosystem that anticipates lifestyles, uh, influences the aesthetic of the coming years, now also has to anticipate the new environmental regulations, which will soon come into effect in France, in Europe, and in the United States. So we're going to start by looking at uh, some of the areas covered by these directives without being exhaustive, but just in order to put the keys we're going to provide you into some context. So first, in terms of environmental labeling, uh, the way the French EcoScore is calculated is evolving. So now you will have to provide the countries of uh, where each process, each transformation was done, in order to calculate a product's impact. So you will have to trace back to the source of the raw material to provide this information. And then in a second phase, there is text currently being developed. They go beyond a product's environmental impact, and they also consider its social aspect, uh, such as the working conditions uh, and the wages. Another goal is to combat greenwashing. So in terms of uh, traceability and transparency, according to the green claim and the digital product passport, environmental claims uh, must be now supported by impact calculations and scientific evidence. Uh, so that the data now must be reliable, verifiable, and comparable. On the issue of the deforestation, uh, according to the EU deforestation-free supply chain, the origin of the raw material will also have to be communicated, uh, especially for bovine leather, for example, and products derived from wood cellulose, uh, as well as for rubber, for the soles of the shoes, for example. So these are a few examples of uh, new challenges calling for a response to today's ecological requirements, but without hampering the fashion's uh, intrinsic creativity and emotion. So anticipating these changes is also a matter of working with your suppliers here at the show for a new uh, co-creative developments for a co-eco design. Today, thinking about uh, products end of life upstream from the design stage is central to an overall sustainable approach. So anticipating a product's uh, multiple lives, as it is more and more the case now, and or the different options of end of life will, in fact, make a product's uh, design, sourcing, prototyping, production more sustainable then. So if we look at this diagram, we see that there is different levers we can uh, activate at each uh, stage of a product life cycle. At Première Vision, here are the stages uh, for which you can find solutions. So first, uh, the raw material selection. 
the textile, leathers, uh, accessories production. The product end of life, and so the issues relating to recycling and biodegradability. And for the rest of this presentation, uh, we'll be following this uh, cycle stage. So the first lovers lie into the choice of the raw material. So during this first stage, what are the sustainable criteria that come into play? So at this stage, we can already aim for better quality and therefore a greater longevity, depending on our choice of fiber, skin or mat component material. So um, there's an essential, uh, an essential notion that we don't uh, focus on enough, which is a product's quality and its resulting durability. So in terms of quality, if you take cotton, for example, when you opt for long fiber qualities, uh, the product will be stronger, more resistant to abrasion, and will enable an optimized mechanical recycling. The best fibers, such as linen, hemp, and nettle, they're also known for their very high resistance. You can consider using them in blends for winter collections to enhance a product's durability. And the wools are also strong enough. They can be worn and reworn. There's also some properties that come from the spinning process such as the crepe yarns uh, that have a natural elasticity. Uh, so the wool, for example, lends itself perfectly to the production of stretchy, uh, naturally stretchy crepe yarns, and thus provides an alternative to elastane. At this stage of selecting the raw material, we can also favor raw materials and innovations for their uh, environmental performance and choose alternatives to petrochemicals products. So again, the linen, hemp, nettle, also kapok and uh, abaca, uh, for example, they require less water and promote a better soil health. So we're seeing a revival of uh, spinning mills in Europe and also processes adapted to better meet the market requirements, such as cottonizing uh, the hemp, for example, for denim or casual wear, fabrics or knits. And we also see more and more bust fibers in the textile accessories. The regenerative agriculture, uh, which is quite common for growing linen or hemp, is now developing for cotton as well. Uh, so the regenerative agriculture not, uh, does not have only no negative impact, but it actually has a positive impact on the soils. Uh, the crop rotations, the cover crops, and the absence of chemical inputs help the soil retain the nutrients and the water. And on the synth uh, synthetic sides, in both fabrics and accessories, there is a growing offer of biosourced polymers where the fossil fuels are replaced by renewable natural resources. This offer is now extending to compositions mixing bio-based polyamides and bio-based elastanes. For the artificial materials, such as uh, viscose, um, so they have two major problems, the deforestations and the impact of the chemical used. So today, uh, we have certifications such as uh, FSC or PEFC, to attest that a product comes from a sustainably managed forest and uses uh, le less toxic chemicals and that the water and the solvents are reused. So for example, uh, we can mention the Ecovero viscose uh, and the Naya acetates. 
in accessories, the labels and the badges also use FSC or PEFC certifications to ensure the absence of uh, deforestation. In the textile fibers derived from animals, uh, many proposals ensure animal well-being. In particular, they are based on the respect for the five animal freedoms, the absence of hunger, thirst, physical and heat stress, fear, pain. So we have RWS, RMS and RAS certifications that guarantee traceability to breeding and shearing to the absence of uh, mulesing. Today, there is uh, also a new raw material that are emerging within a circular approach. So they are using waste byproducts, especially from the agri-food industry. So repurposing these uh, co-products uh, gives rise to new textile fibers, like fibers derived from banana or pineapple leaves, so this initi initiative, they result in a reduced soil footprint and also generates uh, additional income for farmers. And furthermore, uh, we can emphasize the, uh, I mean, ha how important it is to diversify uh, the raw material. Today, there is only two fibers that account for nearly 80% of the uh, world's fiber production, the cotton, 25%, and the polyester, 54%. So we need to also use other fibers to avoid concentrating the negative impacts in, the sp in some specific areas. And it's also important at this, at this stage to anticipate the product's end of life. And later on, we will look closer at recyclability and biodegradability. When it comes to leather, when selecting the raw materials, the main issue is in the origin of the raw height. We can remember here that 98% uh, of leather is waste from the agri-food industry. So in terms of traceability, the challenge is to go back upstream to obtain information about the origin of the raw hide before the slaughterhouse and even up to the breeding stage. At present, we have LWG and ECHEC that certify a traceability to the slaughterhouse. Uh, but we see now proposals that are emerging for a traceability to the livestock farm. And the second issue in leather is deforestation. Uh, so starting in 2025, uh, European directives will require companies to know where the raw material comes from, where it, it is sourced, and therefore the farms where the animals are bred. The deforestation in leather also concerns the origin of the bark used for the vegetable tanned leather. So here is an example, for example, uh, on the right, uh, where the tannin is FSC certified. So here we move to the project design stage. Uh, it is a part of the process that is uh, entirely in your hands. So for us at Première Vision, we can only encourage you to think this stage as a part of a global approach, building on the previous stages while looking ahead to the stages to come. Here's another stage where uh, we at Première Vision uh, can also help you in your sustainable sourcing. It is the production of textiles, leathers, and accessories, including their finishing and dyeing. 
So the main focus uh, for this uh, stage is reducing the chemical impact. So we can start here with leather, where tanning and retanning processes can require large amount of water, energy, and chemicals. In, Euro in Europe, there is the rich chemical directives that regulate the maximum uh, chromium content in finished leather. The international LWG certification also uh, helps identify responsible tanneries. So in the chrome alternatives, uh, we can mention the metal-free synthetic uh, tanning. So we call these leathers uh, wet white because they're a perfect base for uh, bright and intense colors. They are supple and soft uh, with um, a very round handle. And today, the recipes are evolving to counter the potentially harmful products, such as uh, the glutaraldehyde and the bisphenols. And uh, this season, we're seeing the emergence of biopolymer-based uh, solution derived from hemp oil and also olive oil residues. Also on the rise for the past two seasons is the chrome-free tanning, which is free of heavy metal and uses uh, other metals such as uh, aluminum, for example. Uh, it is a tanning for versatile, sturdy, and high-performance products. And it is another solution for uh, potentially harmful products. The vegetal, uh, vegetable tanning is evolving as well, uh, thanks to tanning agents that come from circular plant resources. So these are byproducts of the agri-food industry, like olive and uh, sumac leaves. They get a better uh, dyeing response and we see this season a very large offer of very supple leathers for clothing uh, from the vegetable tanning. We can also, in vegetable leather, color uh, the leather without any dyes or pigments by using naturally colored vegetable tannins. And therefore, we can reduce water and energy consumption and the impact of the chemicals. And this season, uh, the tannins solution are developed with new vegetal extracts. They create their own shade and allow a better control on the color wanted. So we have, for example, the quebracho that will give a reddish hue. We have the chestnut that will give a, a, a yellow shade. We have the gold oak that will give a light top hue. This season, we also see a return to bio-based, 100% plant-based wax finishings. And here we share with you a uh, favorite. Uh, it's a crinkled lambskin with a patent finishing for clothing, and it's water-based and solvent-free. So back to textiles, what are the current sustainable dyeing processes? So uh, the vegetable dyes continue to evolve and offer a solution to water solution and uh, risky hazardous chemicals. Whether plant or fruit based, we see new generation of vegetable dyes without any toxic mordants. And they can be used on natural fibers, whether vegetal, animals, and also cellulosic fibers. Another example is Colorifix uh, technology, which is based uh, on microbiology. So the colorants are developed through the fermentation of agricultural co-products. And they can be adapted to different bases, such as uh, this polyester. And 
uh, for a full optimization, another option is to use the color of the mechani mechanically recycled fibers uh, based on the existing colors of recycled cottons uh, or wool, so without any bleaching or over dyeing. And also, we can use the uh, fibers' original colors. So the wools, for example, they are naturally cream, brown, or gray. Brown or gray. And here, for example, we harness uh, natural shades uh, to produce the check weaves without any dyeing. There's also the original uh, fiber shades of uh, the vegetal, f vegetal fibers like some varieties of cotton. They grow in color, and fibers range from pinkish uh, brown to greenish hues. So again, an option uh, that doesn't require any dyeing. In terms uh, for a winter collection of uh, eco-responsible protection, the research is moving toward more and more naturalness in the finishing processes. So this one, for example, is a low chemical impact fabric, water repellent and windproof, thanks to an olive oil-based uh, wax finishing. Here in a, is a, another water repellent finishing using carbon coatings. It's made from uh, wood, wood residues from uh, FSC certified forests on a recycled base. And we see finishings for downproof, waterproof, windproof products derived also from uh, biosourced polymers. And they are just as uh, technical and performant as the conventional finishings. In accessories as well, for the zip coatings, we make sure that the developments are free of uh, PFC. Uh, which is a particularly harmful and lasting in the environment uh, product. And to reduce the impact uh, of metal components, uh, we can favor the stainless steel, since uh, it does not undergo additional treatment and does not deteriorate uh, much over time. Or we have also low impact finishing processes, such as uh, PVD, physical uh, vapor deposition, uh, which uses less water and produces less uh, residue than the conventional galvanizing. And the responsible approach involves not only the product, but also the company as a whole, uh, so here at Première Vision, we have many companies uh, that are able to provide you information about their commitments in terms of uh, environmental management, such as uh, the water and energy cons consumption, the renewable uh, energies, the chemical substances, and uh, waste management. And for example, in leather, we have the tanneries certified LWG that guarantee a full environmental management. Concerning uh, transport, so that is stage that is as well entirely under your control. Uh, so as a few words, the idea is to aim as far as possible for uh, the shortest supply chain knowing, of course, that certain uh, specific know-how are localized in far-off regions and can't be made elsewhere. Uh, but on the packaging side of logistics, we have here companies that offer uh, solutions. The fashion industry being the, the leading e-commerce industry, uh, the packaging is both a major way to reduce an, our environmental footprint and a giant field of uh, creativity. So you will find a packaging focus in the accessories forum in Hall 3, 
and some of our exhibitors are presenting invertible boxes that can become uh, gift boxes combining functional and decorative use, glueless folding boxes, reusable fishing, uh, ship, shipping packaging. And to reduce the use of uh, plastic, we have other innovations, including materials with the same resistance to tearing and uh, humidity as plastic. Here's a bag made from wood cellulose, recyclable, FSC certified, and using soy ink. There's also this bag made of uh, bioplastic, which is water soluble and biodegradable. So at the sales and marketing uh, stage, you fashion brands, you are at the forefront of uh, understanding the evolving demands of consumers in terms of uh, transparency and uh, concrete commitments. And here, we, uh, you can rely on uh, your suppliers at Première Vision who already started to calculate their environmental impact. So here we can ask, uh, what does consum consumer use mean today? So as we saw earlier, a product durability is a fundamental criteria now for sustainability. And the environmental impact uh, of washing a product over its entire lifespan is also an important factor now. So here is a concrete example. Uh, a high-resistance synthetic for a sturdy outerwear item that almost uh, never needs washing and might be recyclable can be considered positive because of its longevity. Whereas uh, a synthetic fleece, for example, washed uh, regularly, contributes to the dispersion of micro-particles of plastic, so today, we have a new criterion for choosing a fiber, its environmental impact over the lifespan of the garment. And uh, good news, we have uh, for this winter season a great offer uh, in four furs that are alternatives to conventional synthetics, such as bio-based polymers, like this one, In uh, Astrakhan versions, uh, also this one, for example, developed in Naya fibers. In organic cotton for a very fluffy faux fur, this one is a GOTS uh, certified. And especially in wool uh, or mohair blends, like this one, that are also uh, woven. So when we consider the billions of garments produced every year, uh, thinking about the product's end of life is fundamental. Once the material has reached the end of a uh, life cycle, what can be done with it? How can it be reused? So today, the most widely used recycled material is polyester. 50% uh, of the polyester offer now, but it's made from uh, plastic, uh, recycled plastic bottles. The textile-to-textile -textile recycling accounts uh, now for only 1% of the global uh, fibers production. So one aim uh, would be to increase recycling inside our own industry. We see new generation artificial materials, for example. Uh, they rely on the chemical recycling of cotton or plant waste. Thus, uh, they are avoiding virgin resources. In the natural materials that are mechanically recycled, such as cotton, wool, and silk, the resources can be either production waste, like here, 
with a silk uh, recycled from the silk spinning waste and a ghost, uh, ghost <laughs> organic recycled cotton. Or resources can be clothing recuperated at the end of life, as with uh, post-consumer recycling. With the natural materials that are um, chemically uh, recycled, we can obtain new artificial materials. Like here, uh, it's a viscose with relino, which is recycled linen production waste. Or here we have uh, with uh, Refibra, in a blend of 30% uh, pre- and post-consumer recycled textiles, plus 70% wood pulp from sustainably managed forests. And you can go even further with artificials entirely developed from recycled textiles. The circulose, uh, for example, is, a, is produced by chemically recycling pre- or post-consumer cotton from production of cuts or end-of-life garments without adding any wood pulp. In terms of fantasy, we find recycled uh, sequins on uh, tulle base. And the lace offer continues to grow with lace made from recycled polyamides. And to provide compositions with a maximum of uh, recycled content, uh, elastane are being developed in recycled version with up to 60% of recycled production waste. In terms of leather recycling, the first approach is uh, to recycle the substances used, especially chromium. So the Evolo process recycles chrome tanned uh, leather waste, transforming it into a retaining uh, solution that doesn't require any additional chromium. And the second approach in leather is to recycle production waste. So uh, Recyc leather recycles waste from the production of leather gloves. It is then um, shredded and combined with a heavy binder with a water-based polyurethane finishing. With uh, accessories, uh, when the textiles are prepared for recycling, the areas for components are shaved off, which means losing that material. So to avoid this, we can weigh upstream, choose components and fabrics made from the same material, so then the finished product can be entirely uh, recycled. Or, as seen here, we can use removable uh, components, once again, to optimize uh, the recycled material. Finally, in terms of biodegradability, the factors uh, we are considering are the environment, so does it disintegrate in fresh water, sea water, soil, the degree of decomposition and the time required, and the absence of toxicity in the decomposed material. So biodegradability must be tested and verified according to this criteria, governed by standards. So we can keep in mind that even for a natural product, each processing step can alter its original biodegradability, causing it to release toxic substances as it disintegrates. So that's why biodegradability is uh, verified on the finished product. Uh, very famous to take 100 years to disintegrate, uh, the synthetics are looking for new formulas to improve their biodegradability. Like here, uh, with this biodegradable polyester blended with cotton. In the innovations, uh, we see also the PLAX, which is a new generation of PLA developed from Ken Sugar. It is uh, chemically recycled, 
and tested for accelerated biodegradability. And here we have uh, liver's lace uh, in a biodegradable blend, mixing a polyamide with an accelerated biodegradability with an organic cotton. And there is new developments that even combine biodegradable material and membrane to ensure that the product's decomposition is not impeded. In the accessories, the offer is expanding to include uh, products with accelerated biodegradability as well, in packaging as we've seen, but also in labels and buttons, uh, like this one as an example made from coconut shades. And in leather, there is here a Mastrotto leather tested for biodegradability according to the ISO reference standards. Or we can also mention the leathers from olive and leather, tanned with active ingredients extracted from olive uh, leaves that come from the, the, the uh, olive oil industry. And they are biodegradable and certified cradle to cradle gold. And a last example of a complete uh, circular approach. Um, the production of cuts from the vegetable tanning of leathers from Renault Jeune are recycled as a fertilizer. So in this 360 degrees approach, uh, what allows us to verify that all stages meet the required uh, standards and eco-improvements is traceability. So this uh, is an essential tool to guarantee the origin, the composition, the processes, and all the factors related to uh, the company and its environmental uh, management. And uh, so here are the various tools at Première Vision uh, to help you in your sustainable sourcing. Uh, first, there's a space dedicated to eco-innovative fabrics and yarns in the Sourcing uh, Solution Forum, where you can find all the products I just presented and many others. You will see a lot of explanations on this uh, forum as well. So if you want to go deeper uh, in uh, each uh, theme or product, innovation. For the leather and the accessories, uh, eco-innovations, they are on their own respective forums. And there is a fashion desk at your disposal where you can uh, find sustainability experts that can give you personal advices. In the forums, you will also see these uh, performance codes to help you identify a product's uh, sustainable quality. These are codes that you can find also on our uh, marketplace, where specific filters can uh, guide you through online sustainable sourcing. And also, if you want to keep learning about uh, sustainability, we have a lot of material on our uh, online magazine. We also have a monthly podcast dedicated to sustainable fashion. It's, uh, it is called the Smart Creation Podcast. And to close this presentation, a word about Première Vision's news program this season called A Better Way to help you identify exhibitors with a sustainable approach. Uh, so we have categorized their efforts using five criteria. Each criteria uses a pictogram to give you a quick understanding. So the first criteria being uh, social initiatives to promote better care of people through corporate practices and in the supply chain. The impacts of uh, production sites, 
whether you own the production facilities or use uh, subcontractors. The traceability, our uh, central key. The better composition and material used uh, to favor uh, organic, responsible, certified, recycled, or processes having a lower environmental impact. And the finished product durability and end of life, factoring end of life into the design of the product, especially its longevity, reparability, and recycling capacity. So many thanks uh, for your attention, and uh, I wish you good luck in your uh, sourcing and in your uh, future uh, collections. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>